There's some serious cobwebs in this shed. Today I went to get a Korg PA1000 keyboard. The first time I've ever laid hands on this particular keyboard. A keyboard with the power to make even an ordinary car journey seem intense. Unboxing the keyboard comes extremely well packaged uh, and a thoughtful little touch on the, the screen that does flip forward so it stops it doing that in transit with that little bit of tape you can see there and uh, the extra bits and pieces that you find are protected under this bit of cardboard on the inside of the box and you can see there the music rest is wrapped up in there along with the manual and the power adapter. Here is everything from the box all lined up and looking present and correct. Right, gig bag it up and get back home. So I need somewhere to film from. So I've got this really good gooseneck stand. I had to tighten it up onto one of the rafters up here, one of the beams. <laughs> There's cobwebs everywhere. There's probably some nasty stuff living up here. I have to have a good clear out. So everything is plugged in and happy. And uh, always a uh, pleasurable part of opening something new is removing the thingy a bit of tape on the screen because I know this is a um, one of those screens that you can pull forward and angle so they don't want it flapping about in transit uh, and it's also got a protective screen on it here look oh, lovely and smooth and clean uh, now all I need to do is find where you turn it on where do you turn it on ah on button so it's plugged in down in this very cobwebby spider webby corner and on we go nice loading screen very nice to see if there's a firmware update and I can put into this remember that version 1.5 okay looks to be on my first impression is this is a, a very neat looking keyboard for sure. Uh, and, you know, a little bit overwhelming with the amount of buttons, but I know that once you get into these things, everything starts to make sense if you put a bit of time into it. But I've literally, for the first time, sat at a Korg PA1000. Um, haven't touched a single button apart from the on button yet. Um, and I just want to see how easy it is to flip up this screen. And there seems to be, how do we do this? Oh yeah, push it to the left, and that's gonna allow me to lift up the screen. And presumably, what do you do? Ah. So you push it to the right to lock. So get it at the angle you want. And push to lock. Oh, there we go. So I pushed it to the right. It's now locked at that angle, which suits me. Let's have a look around the back, shall we? looks pretty neat tidy sturdy enough so first time uh, I've even touched this screen and what I'm expecting is this to feel like using your iPhone or your iPad to be instant so look yeah and it is there's no there's no delay at all touch screen as you'd expect is instantaneous different sounds so I've really no clue what I'm doing here but that looks like it's taken us into some different categories for voices and I'm just gonna tinker on these vibes all right but I'm not going to get too deep into it at the minute because I'm still having a look at uh, the setup of it exit button presumably will bring us back to what I'll call the home page on here so it looks like voices down the right uh this, this is a little bit of a retro font actually isn't it um i wonder whether that might be updated or maybe this is a, a korg legacy thing 
styles down the left, keyboard setting here, um, and along the bottom, keyboard set, pad, etc. So one voice is set at the minute, it appears to be vibes. If I press that, we go into the voices by the looks of it. Let's just put it back on uh, piano for the time being, concert grand, exit. <laughs> I'm not going to do a lot of playing in this video, I'm just um, trying to get familiar with it. Um, rhythms, that must be here. The red button is flashing at me, start, stop. I've seen this on Yamaha keyboards. So this is straight out of the box, the first style that's loaded by default. I haven't updated the firmware or anything like that. Gotta say, for a little keyboard, those speakers are, uh, are quite impressive. I'm just press press the start stop button to start off uh, one of the the default um, styles, and these little speakers here, they do pack a punch. And just flipping the camera around here, um, they're not very big, but that's impressive. And volume wise, I'm only just over half, so turn that on again. So this is using an iPhone XR. Turn the volume up. That's really impressive. Um, first impression of the sound, the speakers and the amplifiers. I was wondering whether it would be a little bit uh, tinny sounding because those speakers are so, or appear so small, but no, I'm pleased with that. I think that's quite a full, rich sound and uh, that's encouraging. If anyone's got any tips, by the way, of uh, how to de-spider uh, sheds and summer houses. Conkers, is that what you use? Conkers, put them in a bowl and it scares off spiders. Um, let me know if anyone's got any tips. Bringing in a sustain pedal, very useful. Down on the floor it goes. Look at this table, by the way. Antique table from the mother-in-law. That's why I've got this cloth over it, so I don't scratch it and get in trouble. Now, where am I gonna plug this in? I have to switch the camera around. So where am I going to plug in the sustain pedal? Um, oh, everything's reversed, so I'm going to have to see whether I can flip that in post-production. Um, where is my sustain pedal going to go? In the selection at the back here, we've got audio in, audio out, MIDI, as you'd expect, all pretty standard, USB to host, uh, HDMI, presumably that is uh, out to um, a TV screen. I have to try that later when I get a TV in here. Um, but I'm guessing we want to go into damper. Damper pedal just here. So, oops, here we go. Marvellous. On the subject of uh, inputs and outputs, on the front here there is a USB to host uh, at a um, quirky little angle there with the dip. For putting USBs in and taking things off. So I plug my sustain pedal in, I was just going to play the piano and this is happening. My foot's not on the pedal now, so the pedal's working the wrong way around by default. So I have to find a way to change the polarity. Let's see how easy this is. This is my first ever try to do it. Let's see how good the user interface is. I want to change the function of that pedal, uh, reverse the polarity rather, so it works the opposite way around. Uh, I'm looking for something called settings or menu. Uh, menu. Yeah, this looks good. Um, mixer tuning, track controls, pad switches, style controls, voice preset. No, I don't think that's it. Exit. Try pressing menu twice. No. Uh, where do I go to do this? 
global. Oh yeah, might be global. Um, general controls, interface, panel, back then, no. Okay, let's go, go exit. Uh, try that again, global. There's anything that says pedal. Basic, that's what I need. So maybe it's in the voice section. Or is there anything that says pedal? online manual so I think that was global uh, then controllers and then um, foot calibration curve damper calibration function keyboard expression that is what I want oh blimey there's a lot of options isn't there let's just see if we can go back calibration fully press the foot switch pedal to the end while keeping the foot switch pedal pressed, it's down. Press this button, touch this button. Release the foot switch, fully press the back of the pedal. And press that one. Ah, yeah, it's worked this time. So no pedal, with pedal. Lovely. Now the pedal problem sorted, I'm just gonna have a play. This is the default piano sound. So first impression of that, I like the key bed. The key bed's um, quite responsive. This isn't weighted keys, by the way. This is a, a sort of semi-weighted key mechanism. And I like the response. It seems to be quite um, uh, easy to play. And there's a little bit of uh, bounce back from the key. Uh, I enjoyed it. But the sample, the piano sample also, I can detect uh, an awful lot of range there as well. Uh, allowing me to give it lots of light and shade. And again, these speakers they make it, have made a big impression on me um, in the first hour or two of playing this. They sound great. There's a lot of depth for relatively small built-in speakers. Let's take down the gooseneck and see if we can do some top-down shots. Let's see if we can get it right above the keyboard and try and attach it to this beam up here and see if we can have some top-down shots onto the screen and onto my hands. Any uh, DIY people out there, by the way, that can suggest a, a good solution to this, do let me know in the comments. Cheers. There we go. Uh, the gooseneck is on the beam and it's right over the keyboard. I don't think it's going to get in my way when I'm playing, and this should give you some really nice top-down shots of the screen. That's not a bad angle, is it? I'm quite pleased with that. sensitivity uh, as a pianist I love the fact I can just stroke this piano I'm going to turn it up a wee bit and there's room to express yourself Thank you. 
the top. So I want to have a little play around with the voices. Good place to start. It's defaulted to piano when I've turned it on. And what do I do to change the voices? Um, as we saw, if you want to change the main voice, presumably you press that and this gives us different categories. Uh, here we are in pianos, categories down the left. Let's have a quick look through these, shall we? extra pages to go through down here uh, classic piano, piano layers so this will be a piano and a sort of synth sound types of arrangers, isn't it? Um, the first choice seems to be violin. But I'm kind of interested in hearing the real quartets and the, the sort of orchestral strings. impressions. Real strings. So I'm going to touch this as gently as I can.
me all excited about getting into layering sounds on top of each other because even a rudimentary flick through the sounds here um, is making me think these these have a nice clarity and they sound real but they get that fire <laughs> burning inside the creative part of me. Uh, what's real strings too? To switch between them. So a slightly different tone quality to that. Let's go on to the latter pages. Movie strings. So far, I'm really liking this. Have a quick, quick flick through. We're going to cover these in future videos, but let's have a look at some of the synth pads on here. interesting aftertouch on this one called Movie Stack. Um, I have a look at Tension Scene just because I must know what Tension Scene sounds like. Movie section, uh, string section. Is that what I'm in? What section am I in here? I think it was. Oh, it's synth pads. That's it. Page two. There are some really cool, um, really cinematic, uh, atmospheric voices with this aftertouch in them. That's really good. I like that.
So my first 20, 30 minute playing session with uh, PA1000. Um, so far, I, I probably had some preconceptions of it, thinking that, uh, I don't know why, but I, I thought the speakers would let me down and be a little bit tinny, but they're definitely not, uh, as you heard. Um, and these, this is just the iPhone microphone that's uh, picking up the sounds. Um, I could do some DI outputs as well, but I think it's important for people to hear uh, what the speakers are capable of. And um, hearing it in person is actually very, very impressive uh, from the treble all the way to the bass end. Um, solving a little problem like having the polarity the wrong way around on the pedal. Um, online manual. Thank you, Korg. Really easy to solve that little problem. Navigating a way around a screen. Um, so far, I've only touched on voices and it uh, looks easy enough with categories around the side of the screen uh, and uh, the one thing that's got me a bit excited and is going to make me want to uh, come down here and <laughs> have a play in the evening is uh, those movie sounds with the aftertouch um, i love movie soundtracks and atmospheric music like that uh, synth based um, twin peaks styley and uh, i want to come down and have a have a tinker on that so early impressions are uh, better than I'd hoped for the uh, Core PA 1000 and I'm enjoying myself and I'll report back on what I'm able to do in uh, after an hour or so playing on it we'll get the rhythms going on it uh, we'll see if we can do some recording and we'll experiment with um, taking recordings off and putting them onto a computer and such like um, let me know what you want to see. Uh, this is the first time I've sat on one of these so hopefully you can learn from some of my mistakes a little bit and uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.